Come on then. Right, let's do this, shall we? So, hello everybody. Uh, this video is all about uh, difficult words to pronounce in English. Let's practice some tricky pronunciation. Uh, what's going to happen in this video? Well, um, what you're going to do is listen to me say some words and some lines. Um, you can find them written here. They're probably written on the screen. Uh, can you repeat them after me? Try to copy my pronunciation and uh, try to make it exactly the same as the way that I'm saying it, all right? Uh, to get definitions and comments about uh, the words uh, in this video, just click the link in the description below. And uh, you can also listen to an episode of my audio podcast where you'll hear all of these words with jokes, tongue twisters, uh, conversation and more. Just click that link below. Okay then, let's begin. See if you can repeat these words and sentences after me. Let's pay attention to how I'm saying them as well, okay? Um, so, first one is the word sore throat. Sore throat. This is like when you're feeling a bit ill. <clears throat> oh, I've got a sore throat. I don't have a sore throat today, thankfully. But anyway, a sore throat. Sore throat. I've got a sore throat today. I've got a sore throat today. Sore throat. Okay, here's number two. A squirrel. A squirrel. Okay, one of those lovely little cute animals that you might see in the park. A squirrel. And the sentence is, I saw three squirrels in the park today. I saw three squirrels in the park today. I saw three squirrels in the park today. Squirrels. Squirrel. Squirrel. Third one, throughout. Throughout. Now this means all the way through. Okay, so for example, squirrels live in this park throughout the year. Throughout. See the w sound in the middle of that? Throughout. Throughout. Okay. Fourth is the word bewildered, which means confused. Bewildered. Not bewildered, but bewildered. Uh, for example, I was bewildered by all the options. Oh God, too many options. Which one shall I choose? I was bewildered by the options. Next word is the word hierarchy. Hierarchy, which is um, like a system of levels. Okay. For example, a hierarchy in a business. Um, hierarchy. Okay. Higher. Higher, like higher or lower. Higher -ra Hierarchy. For example, there's a flat hierarchy in our company. There's a flat hierarchy in our company. Don't forget to repeat these. Try to repeat them exactly the way that I'm saying them. There's a flat hierarchy in our company. You might want to just pause the video to help you do that. Um, next word is number six. This is a difficult one. Anesthetist. Anesthetist. A -nis -th -tist. Anesthetist. Okay, and the verb is to anesthetize. 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 Okay, so the example sentence, see if you can repeat this. It's the job of the anesthetist to anesthetize the patients with an anesthetic. <laughs> it's the job of the anesthetist to anesthetize. Oh. It's the job of the anesthetist to anesthetize the patients with an anesthetic. All right. Number seven, threshold. Threshold. Another word with a th sound in it. Threshold. Threshold is basically a level or a point at which, at which one thing ends and another thing begins. For example, we talk about tax thresholds. So different levels of tax. Um, threshold. The example is if you earn more than 70,000 pounds, you enter the next tax threshold. Whew, God, it's hot here. It's not just the pronunciation, it's just hot. Um, if you earn more than £70,000, you enter the next tax threshold. Number eight is worthlessly. Worthlessly, which means sort of in a worthless way, or where there's no, you know, there's no worth or there's no point. Worthlessly. 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 And the sentence, I was worthlessly trying to impress her. 
I was worthlessly trying to impress her. Number nine, uh, Worcestershire. Uh, this is a kind of sauce, isn't it? It's a sauce that comes from a place in England called Worcestershire. Uh, Worcestershire sauce. There's actually two ways of saying it. You can do the full way, Worcestershire sauce. And some people say Worcester sauce. So Worcestershire becomes Worcester. Pass the Worcestershire sauce, would you? Can you say that? Pass the Worcestershire sauce, would you? Ten is uh, a name, and that is William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth. Can you say it? William Wordsworth. For example, William Wordsworth was a wonderful writer. William Wordsworth was a wonderful writer. Okay, number 11. Uh, some minimal pairs here, words that sound similar. So we've got the word live and the word leave. So live and leave. Okay, you see the difference? It's a short sound in live and a long sound in leave. So live and leave. For example, you have to live a little bit before you leave this world. Very philosophical statement. Um, live and leave. Number 12 is ship and sheep. This classic example that's been used so many times before. There's, in fact, there's a book for pronunciation practice called Ship or Sheep. Uh, ship, obviously a big boat, and sheep, an animal, an animal that uh, we use to get wool. Um, ship or sheep. For example, we put all the sheep onto the ship. So the ship was full of sheep. Okay, ship is a short sound, i, and sheep is a long sound, e, sheep, ship or sheep. Number 13, uh, full, meaning, for example, the, the room is full. There's not enough space, there's no more space, the room is full. And fool, meaning like an idiot. You stupid fool, for example. Okay, so full, short sound, and fool, the long sound. Um, for example, the room is full, you fool. The room is full, you fool. Can you say that? Like, we can't fit anyone else in. The room's full, you fool. Number 14, the word architecture. Architecture. For example, I love the architecture on this building. It's amazing. Architecture. Okay, and then the adjective, uh, number 15, architectural. Architectural. For example, the architectural style is fascinating. The architectural style is fascinating. You're still repeating these after me, aren't you? You should be, because that's the point of this video. You're supposed to be practicing by repeating after me, so keep doing it. Um, number 16, the word draw. Draw. I know it's spelt, dr it looks like drawer, but it's actually pronounced draw. For example, a drawer where you keep the knives and forks. You know, you open the drawer, take the knives and forks out, close the drawer again. So, can you repeat this? The knives and forks are in the top drawer on the left. The knives and forks are in the top drawer on the left. Where are your knives and forks? Oh, they're just, they're in the top drawer on the left. All right. Number 17 is colonel. Colonel. Um, a colonel is a senior officer in an army. It's like a, a position in the army, a senior position. Um, colonel. And it looks like colonel actually pronounced colonel. For example, Colonel Sanders founded Kentucky Fried Chicken. Colonel Sanders founded Kentucky Fried Chicken. Colonel Sanders, that's that guy with the beard and moustache and the white, uh, sort of white suit. You see him on the logo for KFC. That's Colonel Sanders. Uh, number 18, uh, another word that sounds the same, and that's colonel, spelt K-E-R-N-E-L, colonel, and in this case, a colonel is a nut. It sounds exactly the same. You've got Colonel Sanders, and then you've got a pine kernel, meaning a pine nut. Same sound. So they, they are homophones, these words. For example, pine kernels can be delicious. Pine kernels can be a delicious addition to a salad. Can you say that? Pine kernels can be a... I can't even say it. Pine kernels can be a delicious addition to a salad. Number 19, the word comfortable. It's not comfortable, just comfortable, three syllables. Are you comfortable? Would you like a pillow? It's like, oh, it's quite comfortable, isn't it? This seat's really comfortable. 
comfortable. Okay, and the ad the adverb would be comfortably. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. For example, comfortable. Um, number twenty. Pronunciation. Pronunciation, not pronunciation. That's a common mistake. It's actually pronounced pronunciation. So the noun is pronunciation. The verb is pronounce, but the uh, noun pronunciation. So, for example, pronunciation is important. You have to pronounce words properly. Okay, number 21, uh, recipe. Recipe, for example, like the instructions for how to cook something. Recipe. Say it with me. Recipe. Can you give me that delicious cake recipe? Can you give me that delicious cake recipe, please? You have to say please. It's polite. Okay. Um, number 22. Uh, scissors. Have I got any scissors up here? Yes, here we go. Scissors. Now, um, scissors, not schizors, uh, but scissors. Um, so, can you repeat it? Scissors. For example, do you know where the scissors are? Where are the scissors? Where, where did I put the scissors? Have you, anyone seen the scissors? Oh, they're in my hand. <laughs> scissors, all right. Uh, next word, number 23, is the word strengths. Yeah, that's a difficult one. Ready? Strengths. Yeah. K -s -s strengths. Strengths. Yeah. And it means strong points. It's the opposite of weaknesses. So your strengths and weaknesses. Um, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Or what are your strengths and weaknesses? Now, if it's difficult to say strengths, you can just say strengths. It's basically okay. Strengths is, is all right if you can't say strengths. Okay. Uh, next one is clothes. 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 Thz. Clothes. Not clothes. And certainly not clothes. Uh, clothes. Yeah. Clothes. Now, for example, I bought some new clothes today. Now, if it's difficult to say clothes, you can just say close, like close the door. It's a shortcut. You can just say close if you can't say clothes. So, saying clothes is better than saying clothes. Okay, so there you go. Uh, number 25, months. Months. Okay, nine months, you know. Or, how old's your baby now? Oh, she's 18 months old now. She's 18 months old. Again, if you can't say months, you can just say months. So, replace the th sound in month. Uh, months. Replace the th sound with a t sound. And you end up with months. 13 months old. Okay, that's, that's not so bad. If you can't say months, you can just say months instead. For example, she's 18 months old now. She's 18 months old now. Uh, number 26, uh, the word eighth. So we've got the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Okay, eighth. Uh, so, for example, Henry VIII was a Tudor king of England. Henry VIII. Can you say that? Henry VIII. You see that? Th, 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 th. Not s, not th. Th. Okay. It's difficult. It's one of the most difficult ones for many people. Th. But you can do it with practice. Just the tip of the tongue comes under your teeth. Not th. Well, not all the way out. Just a little bit. Th. 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 Like that. You could practice that. Th. 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 And th. 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 Yeah. So, Henry VIII. Practice makes perfect. Uh, number 27, uh, the word Q, Q, which is a strange word in terms of its pronunciation because it's basically the letter Q followed by four unnecessary letters, isn't it? Q, because we say the letter Q as Q and the word Q is pronounced the same way. So why do we have U-E-U-E -U -E at the end? I don't know. But anyway, it's pronounced Q. Uh, for example, sorry, are you in the Q? Are, you're, are you skipping the Q? Sorry, the end of the queue's back there. Yeah, we're all queuing up here. We're not just standing here. Unbelievable. Okay, a queue, a line of people waiting for something. Uh, number 28 is the word fruit. Fruit. 
So not fruit, uh, but fruit. Okay, for example, uh, do you have any fresh fruit? Do you have any fresh fruit? Can you repeat these? You stop repeating them. What's the matter with you? You didn't. You, I know you didn't, but some of the other ones did. Fruit. Okay. Um, number, number 29, 16th. So we had 8th earlier. Now we've got 16th. 16th. For example, it's the 16th of October. It's the 16th of October. Okay. Number 30, 18th. So we've gone past 17th and into 18th. It's the 18th of November. It's the 18th of November. It's the 18th of November. That's five words, right? It's the 18th of November. Uh, next one is number 31, and this is 13th. That's one, three, th, 13th, the 13th. Okay, for example, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, unlucky for some. Friday the 13th. Okay, uh, number 32 is the word 30th, and that's 30th. 30th. The 30th. <laughs> How are you doing? How's your face? All right? It's, it feels like going to the gym because it is like going to the gym because it's muscles. It's about working the muscles in your mouth, your jaw, your tongue. So if it feels like you're if it feels uncomfortable and your face even aches, that's good because it means you're working those muscles. So you've got to keep doing it. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, what's what was that word? 30th. For example, it's the 30th of December. It's the 30th of December. Number 33. Uh, and here we've got a few words uh, with silent letters. The first one is bomb. A bomb, um, an explosive device. B-O-M-B, -B, but the B at the end is silent, so we end up with bomb, um, and bomb, and bombed, and bombing as well. For example, there was a bomb scare in the station. There was a bomb scare. That's when the station gets evacuated because, you know, um, there's been an alert about a bomb, a possible bomb. There was a bomb scare in the station. People were talking about a bombing. So that's bombing, not bombing bombing. And I can remember when the IRA bombed Oxford Street. I can remember when the IRA bombed Oxford Street. So that's bombed, not bombed. Okay, uh, 34, we're nearly at the end, uh, is the word climb, which also has a silent B on the end. Climb, like climb like this, you know, climb a mountain, climb a ladder. Um, climb, for example, do you want to go climbing next weekend? Do you want to go climbing next weekend? So that's climbing, not climbing. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, number 35 is comb. So that's like a thing that you'd use to comb your hair or not use in my case. Comb your hair. You know, it's like a flat thing made of plastic. Comb your hair like that. A comb. Okay, C-O-M-B, but the B is silent. I'm just combing my hair with a comb. Can you repeat that? I'm just combing my hair with a comb. Okay, uh, number 36 is crumb. A crumb. Crumbs, these are little bits of bread or little bits of like uh, food that you might find on the surface of a table. Like if you've just eaten a biscuit, yum, 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 and there might be crumbs left on the plate or on the table or something. Crumb with a silent B. For example, why are there loads of breadcrumbs on the table? Have you been cutting bread here? There are lots of crumbs everywhere. Can you clean them up, please? <laughs> crumbs. Okay. Uh, number 37 is the word debt. Debt. It's got a silent B as well. That's debt. Look at, look at this. Say it with me. Debt. Yeah. You can smile when you say it. You shouldn't, but you can. Debt. You know? Uh, it's these lips should not meet when you say that word. So it's not debt, and it's not debt or debt. It's debt. Okay. For example, many students leave university with thousands of pounds of debt. Okay, thousands of pounds of debt. Okay, good. Just got a couple of others left. Uh, next one is doubt. 
doubt, like when you're not sure about something. Um, doubt, not doubt. Again, your lips don't meet. It's doubt. Ooh, doubt, doubt, doubt. Okay. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. It's a brilliant film. There's no doubt about it. Number 39 is the word government or government. Okay. Now there is NM in the middle of the word. Uh, but uh, so you can pronounce it government. That's how I usually pronounce it. Or government with a little N government. You see that? You hear that? Government or government. Government or government. Three syllables, not four. So don't say government. Go it's not government. It's government or government. Okay. For example, the government is yet to make a statement. Or the government is yet to make a statement. That's if you want to sound like you're on the BBC. The government is yet to make a statement on the BBC. Um, and then two more. Uh, number 40 is, is my name, and that's Luke. Luke, okay, not look, not luck, um, not Mr. Luck either, just Luke, uh, okay, Luke uh, Thompson, okay, Luke Thompson. And number 41 is uh, the word podcast. This is a podcast, podcast, all right, not postcard. This is a postcard. Look, a postcard from Japan, that's a postcard, but this is a podcast. Look, there it's written there. Look, podcast, podcast, not postcard. So that's a postcard. That's a, well, that's a podcast. All right. So it's Luke's English podcast, not postcard, not pot card, not podcast, or pot cat. It's a podcast. All right. Cool. So, if you'd like to hear more about this kind of thing, if you'd like to hear more about these words uh, with definitions of the words um, and more, then why not listen to my audio podcast? Okay, did you get that? My audio podcast, uh, which is called Luke's English Podcast. Uh, that, I've shown it to you. Uh, you could start with episode number 485, which is all about difficult uh, English pronunciation. Um, and you'll hear me and a friend of mine, a very funny friend of mine called Paul Taylor, who is a comedian, you hear the two of us talking about all of the most difficult words to say, to say in English, and there are lots of jokes and things like that. Uh, the link to that episode is in the description below. Um, if you haven't already heard it, you can check it out there. Uh, and you can subscribe to Luke's English Podcast on iTunes and on the Android Play Store as well, if you've got an Android phone. Um, also, finally, I would just like to say thank you to the people from Topito.com. Uh, the first 10 words in this list... Uh, came from a list of difficult English words that they originally published on their website a few months ago. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Cheers.